The Luxury Channel is in Monte Carlo to explore the exclusive and expensive world of luxury mega yachts. You're here in the, the Principality of Monaco, probably the most significant super yacht show on the planet. Uh, Monaco is unique. Uh, it's a couple of years that I've been coming to the Monaco Boat Show and I don't think there's any other boat show in the world that compares. It has a history steeped in glamour and razzmatazz. There will be cocktail parties, receptions on the yachts, gala dinners in, in and around Monaco. All of the big yachts are here, all of the key people are here, and most importantly for us, clients come here. It's a fantastic setting with everything that the Côte d'Azur has to offer. Some of the world's most spectacular yachts are on display at the most important and glamorous boat show in the world. But to join the world of luxury yachting requires deep pockets, with prices for a good second-hand ocean-going vessel starting at around 12 million euros. To build a new one can take five years and cost an owner anything up to 600 million euros. These are the big boys. They're the world's leading yards. The show like Monaco, you've got the best yachts from the best shipyards with the best designers that we are going to see and we continue to see strong demand. Coming up in the show, the Luxury Channel boards some spectacular private motor yachts and talks to some of the key players in the yachting world, hearing from them about the future of this multi-billion euro industry. We'll be exploring the new technology available to boat owners and discovering which new gadgets they're equipping them with. And of course, the Luxury Channel was invited to all the right parties. And finally, we get an exclusive invitation to the launch of the very latest model from one of the most celebrated names in yachting. It's a very different world, but it's a wonderful one. It's a very exciting one, and for the moment it's continuing with aplomb. Life aboard a private luxury mega yacht is a pastime affordable only to the mega rich. It's a private world where your floating home could visit any one of the four corners of the planet. But here at Monaco, the Luxury Channel gets a rare glimpse into this extraordinary lifestyle. It is expensive to be at the Monaco Yacht Show. It's expensive to be part of any luxury event. The price of these yachts is exclusive on its own. The running costs mustn't be dismissed. To keep a yacht in good condition, you have to invest. It's probably one of the most expensive pastimes one can do in life, but as I say, it gives you such freedom and tranquility and the opportunity to explore parts of the world in a way that you otherwise can't. I think the price is justified by the experience that it affords. A super yacht is a uh, ultimate luxury equipment for a successful businessman. That's what I understand. Monaco is my favorite location. You find yourself extra freedom and your um, own privacy. So it's a definitely a good feeling. Along with the 90 or so mega yachts on display at Monaco are 500 of the world's leading yachting companies, including the brokers. Brokerage firms are the connectors of the yachting world. They can oversee the building, management and chartering of a yacht. Anyone selling yachts says they provide uh, the best service. First and foremost, you've got to be an expert on yachts. You've got to know exactly what you're talking about. You've got to know the market brilliantly well, and you've got to know all of the people who matter. We would be the first point of call to put the right team together for you in terms of the build you want, the performance you want, the type of cruising you want, the lifestyle you want. You can come here and buy a boat sort of off the peg, pretty much instant. I mean, you'd have it ready for the Christmas season in Antigua. We have seven yachts on display here this week. We have the beautiful J-Class Ranger, a very classic sailing yacht, recently rebuilt, but featuring the designs of the original J-Class yachts from the, the golden age of sail racing. We've got Kokomo here, which I think, I have to say, I'm not sure she's on that. I think she's on at 34 and a half million euros. She's a beautiful, probably the nicest uh, sailing yacht around right now. It's available to buy. We have Lady Christine, which is a, an ocean co. She's the one with the helicopter on down here. Whether we actually sell the yacht during the show, it's very unlikely it'll ever complete that quickly, but we certainly expect to have offers on at least two of the yachts we have here. Prices ranging from anything around four or five million euros up until 40 million euros. There will be people walking by this show who have a lot more than 40 million euros in their pocket. Some of the world's wealthiest uh, private individuals will be down here this week. Sometimes you see sore feet and long days, but every year for the last seven years, we've done business as a result of the show. George Nicholson ran Camper and Nicholson for 10 years and is widely thought to be one of the pioneers of the yachting world. 
Having retired from the company in 2001, he's back at Monaco to soak up the atmosphere. Yachting has become a very popular pastime. The land has become very overcrowded. Once people tasted yachting, frequently through charter, they got the feel for it as they progressed through life and made more money. So many of them changed up to larger and larger yachts and the infrastructure has grown with them until we have reached where you see us today. There's a slight change in the dynamic of the market in that it used to be that an owner would, would come on board as a sailor. I mean, they, they'd sell dinghies when they were children, and they grew up with boats, and they made wealth, and they buy themselves a yacht. Whereas today, you have your apartment here, you have a villa there, you might have a, 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 a private jet or two, a helicopter, a Ferrari, maybe the Bugatti, and a yacht. It's a must-have item. And that changed the dynamic of the market. Despite the global economic slowdown, the mega yacht industry, according to many, will be one of the least affected of world markets. But why is that? The top end has always been pretty solid. It's the smaller boats and the, and the mid-market which tends to suffer. There's been huge growth over the last few years and you know, there's no sign of that abating. I mean, we need to see what happens over the next months, but certainly in the sector that we are operating in, which is at the very, very top end, we uh, remain confident and optimistic that it'll continue to move. Not all visitors to the Monaco show are here to buy a yacht. Some of them are looking to sell, including Mark Lawrence, co-owner of the 132-foot Leonora. Nothing really compares to the freedom that is achieved by going out on a boat. I first went sailing when I was about eight years old and fell in love with that experience and have owned boats through my life and culminating in the purchase of this boat. As they say, all good things have to come to an end, and we've had some wonderful experiences on her. They do say the two happiest days in your life are the day you buy your boat and the day you sell it. She's German-built by Lursen, who are probably the world's preeminent shipbuilder, have built boats such as Octopus for Paul Allen and Limitless for Leslie Wexner, Corinthia 7, and the quality of the engineering is second to none. She is a steel hulled boat with a nautical range of over 5,000 miles. So it really affords you the ability to explore parts of the world that you otherwise would not be able to reach in other boats that made our uh, lighter materials and with higher engine power don't have the range. She's asking 12 million euros, which compares to about a probably 35 million euro new build cost. With inflation in markets at the moment, new build costs are rising very rapidly. So what you get is a vessel that has been kept in an as-new condition, available for a fraction of the new build cost. And in addition to that, you get a vessel which is ready to go in turnkey condition, rather than having the probably 18 month to two year yard build period if you were to walk into a yard and ask for a yacht today. But who exactly is buying boats like Leonora? Two words, elephant and dragon. The Russians are the Arabs of the 21st century for yachting. So they've suddenly come along with a massive amounts of money to spend. They have single-handedly boosted sales enormously. However, the, the future ownership is probably looking at India and China. The Chinese do not have a tremendous yachting culture. The Olympics at Qingdao have made a big difference to that, of course. When you consider there are more Ferraris in China than anywhere else, there are more millionaires in China than anywhere else. When it takes off, it'll take off very rapidly. Once you've bought a boat, you could be forgiven for thinking that finding somewhere to park your newly acquired yacht would be easy. Think again. With the exception of certain specialized areas, the development of marinas is almost impossible. In, for example, France, you can't develop within 100 meters of the water. Anything, nada. Marina development doesn't happen very much in America. There is a crisis of where to park your yacht. And as they get to giga sizes, let's say 100 meter plus, something of that size simply can't go into a yacht marina anymore. Um, it has to go into a commercial port. As we've heard, traditional cruising destinations are limited to some yachts due to their size. But other destinations are becoming available, especially as now boats don't need to get there under their own steam. Dogwise deliver uh, yachts 
It's a pickup truck full of yachts, only it's 200 meters long. And it comes in, it sinks down, you drive the yacht in, it floats itself and it goes off to Fort Lauderdale. Sinks and you drive your boat off. So that actually the world is fully accessible to any size of yacht on that basis. Dockwise is clearly not a permanent solution. However, Michael Horrigan of Island Global Yachting is on the front line of the battle for marina expansion with new developments all over the world. I think the success of what we do is making a very complicated process seem very simple. Many people will ask us who IGY regards as a competitor and without a trace of arrogance for us, we don't really regard in this industry that we do have a competitor. For many generations, a marina has been a mum and pop type organisation where people really approached it from a point of view of a place to tie up boats and little more than that. In the Caribbean, where we're the largest owner operator of marina berths, our members were saying to us, I love what you provide, but I need it elsewhere. I need it in the Mediterranean. I need it in the Indian Ocean. I need it in Asia. So we made a commitment three years ago to start to spread our network of marinas. When you look at, at the contemporary boat owner that exists today and you consider what their expectations are, you consider the investment they've made in their property, in their boat, you consider the sophistication of the modern boats these days, their requirements, you consider the lifestyle that these boat owners are coming from, more than anything they want a no fuss, no bother, all encompassing amenity. Coming up later, the Luxury Channel is on board possibly the star of this year's show. We find out about the latest advances in yachting technology and we get an exclusive invitation to the launch of the latest mega yacht from Riva, one of the most famous names in luxury yachting. The Luxury Channel is in Monte Carlo for the 2008 Monaco Yacht Show. So far, we've seen some of the world's most stunning private yachts, but now we're going to step on board what is arguably one of the most spectacular boats at Monaco this year. Built in 2008 by Benetti, the 196-foot Amnesia is, to some, the star of the show. Although not for sale, she is for charter. Amnesia's stunning interior was designed by Toby Ekuya from British firm Redmond Whiteley Dixon. Our company has been established for about 15 years designing private yachts. I've been with this company for about four years now. Background in sailing really was how I got into it. Combined with uh, uh, architecture really was my two sort of passions and then I was fortunate enough to be able to marry them together and uh, end up designing yachts, which is perfect in, in, my, in my world. Every boat is completely unique and which is one of the real joys of doing what we do is that often it's for a specific client, they, they only want to use it themselves, they don't ever want to charter it and you know, it, it's how they use that boat it ends up influencing the design a little bit as well. I think as a, as, as a charter boat this has got to be up there probably in the sort of top, top two or three I should think. From designing to launching, a boat of this size can take anything up to five years and cost up to 600 million euros. For a boat like this, we're approached with uh, essentially a set of drawings, line plans from the yard, which gives us the, the sort of the profile, the elevation, if you like, of the boat. There's areas that we don't get involved with because they work, there's no point changing them. And they've always sort of been developed over time on other boats. So, so the crew area basically just sort of plugged into our, our, our plan. And then we work out with the client how they're going to use the boat. We sit down, you know, go through their day. We kind of walk through a day with them, you know, from the second they wake up, you know, do they want a glass of orange juice there? Do they, you know, is that wrapped in a linen napkin and a special glass? It's, it's different every time. So you, you kind of build this picture up. It's, a, it's almost sort of getting to know the client, if you like, and you ask lots and lots, lots of questions. And then once you've got that sort of sorted out, the, the sort of general sort of zoning of the boat, if you like, you start working into the detail in the sort of furniture style. Amnesia was launched this year in May. It's charter shoes between 325,000 euros to 
345,000 euros a week. I'd say without doubt she is the star of, of the Monaco show this year. Um, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> it is quite surprising sometimes to, uh, to actually kind of stand back and look at what you're actually doing. Because obviously you're immersed in this sort of world and sometimes when you just take that step back, it's an amazing, uh, just free, free hand to just do basically these beautiful, beautiful handcrafted interiors. Boats like this, clients like this, they're keeping these sort of crafts and skills going and it's just lovely that there are people willing to spend the money to, to do that. As we've already heard, mega yachts are getting larger and larger. The new buzzword is gigayacht, but they're also becoming better equipped. There is space on many of these boats for a helicopter to land easily. Six years ago, we start to develop this market. Last year, we had an extraordinary year again. 801 helicopters sold. In fact, on this platform, you can see there is a tender and a helicopter. So. It's really an answer. A helicopter is a flying tender on a boat, a different way to move around. More and more uh, people would like to live on the yacht, to have the freedom to move around the yacht, so to go easily to their business jet as well as on the ground to take their uh, night bar or other luxury car. And uh, the second important reason is to have uh, a way to go out from the helicopter in case of uh, a problem aboard. Helicopters, though, are just the beginning. Just how are today's boat owners choosing to equip their floating castles? From the user's viewpoint, it's AV systems, very large plasma screens. We're seeing an increase in things like submarines that accompany a yacht. Submarines are pretty hot. I actually went down in one in Barcelona Harbour, which was a very interesting experience. If you had the money for it, you take one dive, you'll buy it, because it's so thrilling. We're seeing an increase in water sports equipment, dive equipment, land-based equipment. And communications. Again, if, if you're a businessman who wants to spend the summer on the yacht, you need to be able to VPN to your home office in security and quickly. There are more and more helicopter-friendly yachts. But the big technological advances will probably be in propulsion and in, in making energy. Today's builders and owners increasingly see fuel consumption as a major concern. Some of these yachts use hundreds of litres of fuel an hour, leaving behind what many see as an unjustifiable carbon footprint. Many designers are looking to new technologies to power these thirsty vessels. There's no doubt that, that this cannot go on. I mean, if you have some of the bigger yachts here going over the Atlantic and burning 400,000 litres of fuel each way, this is not very environmental friendly, and their carbon footprint is of a size that nobody want to hear about. And I'm pretty sure when this comes to the press in the future that some of these boats are using that much fuel, somebody will be held responsible for that. There are one or two smaller yachts which actually have run-on fuel cells using hydrogen. That's maybe 10 years away. Battery power, funnily enough, is quite interesting. There's a yacht called Ethereal, built by Royal Houseman, and it can more or less run all night long at anchor on batteries. A company with an impressive presence at this year's show is the Ferretti Group, an Italian yacht building conglomerate founded in 1968. The Ferretti Group is one of the world leaders in the luxury yacht business. We have brands that have been around for hundreds of years. We do great part of our production in Italy but we do have shipyards also in Spain and in the United States, and we serve clients all around the world. One of the famous brands now under the Ferretti umbrella is CRN, who specialize in steel, aluminium, and composite-hulled mega yachts. Prices start at a very reasonable 35 million euros. Heading up CRN's operation is Lamberto Tacoli. 600 years ago, there were castles for people. Today, these ships are the new castle. 
and the castle can be moved from one part to the other in the entire globe. I think today CRN uh, inside the Fenty Group it's the company producing the bigger size boat and with a difference obviously in the, the material of construction. We are the only company building steel and aluminium either in composite or inside the Ferretti Group. These are boats starting over 35 million, achieving approximately 50 million on boats up to 56, 58, 60 meters. At this time, we have 11 projects under construction in steel and aluminium, and we can deliver approximately three to five units a year, depending on the, on the season. CRN has two mega yachts on display at this year's show, including the one-year-old 178-foot Marea. It's a ship that made 14 weeks of charter after the day of delivery, so the boat left the yard in February. Uh, that, uh, it's, uh, it's an important turnover for, for, for the owner and good show for the boat. And I think, uh, it's, so it's not only expenses, let me say. The second CRN-built yacht at this year's show is the 185-foot Romance. She boasts a swimming pool, several thousand Swarovski crystals, and some of the most individual design touches at the show. It's uh, an amazing work from the yard, uh, and I have to congratulate with the team that worked with the, the joinery, the interiors, the decor, with the owner, because they really did uh, a spectacular job. Yeah. Founded in 1842, the most famous brand of the Ferretti Group is an icon of the yachting world. Riva is something which is uh, in the heart of all the people which are in love with both. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's part of the history of yachting, it's, it's part of the Italian style, it's part of the Dolce Vita. So I believe that everybody loves the, the Riva's way. Riva used to be the boat for lakes and the Dolce Vita of the 60s, Saint-Tropez, Monte Carlo, or Portofino. We have completely remodernized the brand. We have renewed all the models, and today Riva has models that go from 33 feet up to 120 feet, bringing in the most innovative features, new technology, but keeping the tradition and keeping the level of quality that uh, the customers of Riva really expect from this brand. Perhaps best known for their classic speedboats from the 50s and 60s, Riva are still at the forefront of boat design and construction. Our owner, they expect something more. I mean, they are looking for something which is not just a boat, it's something to own, it's something which is part of their life. So we are always talking with them and receiving feedback and I believe this is one of the strengths of Riva, to have the most demanding client and always trying to satisfy them. The important is to innovate in terms of design, to innovate in terms of materials, to innovate in terms of technology, but always looking at our past, looking at our history, at our roof. This is the way we are looking to the future. What better place than the Monaco Yacht Show for Riva to launch their latest model, the 92-foot Duquesa. Monaco Boat Show is, of course, a fantastic place for us to present to the world the new 92 Duquesa. Good evening. I'm very happy to see you all here. And I would like to thank you very much for being here. It's time to unveil and the latest Riva born, ladies and gentlemen, the Duquesa. Thank you very much again.